Coming up on 5-Minute News. Anti-abortion protest in D.C. prepares for life after Roe. U.S. and Russia agree to continue talks to prevent war with Ukraine. And Boris Johnson on the ropes despite failed rebellion. It's Saturday, January 22. I'm Anthony Davis. A yearly anti-abortion rally in the US Capitol sounded more like a victory celebration on Friday as speaker after speaker expressed a growing sense of optimism that their long-sought goal was finally in reach, a sweeping rollback of abortion rights in America. Thousands of anti-abortion protesters rallied in the bitter cold and then marched to the Supreme Court, which has indicated it will allow states to impose tighter restrictions on abortion with a ruling in the coming months and possibly overturn the landmark 1973 Roe v. Wade ruling that affirmed the constitutional right to an abortion. The annual March for Life rally, held one day before the 49th anniversary of the Roe decision, took place amid a COVID-19 surge that limited turnout at the National Mall. Despite the pandemic, the rally drew a crowd of thousands, with a heavy contingent of young people and students bussed in by schools and church groups. The mood was overwhelmingly upbeat, with many treating the end of Roe v. Wade as inevitable. Jeannie Mancini, president of the March for Life Education and Defence Fund, told the crowd that Roe is not settled law and we are hoping and praying that this year, 2022, will bring an historic change for life. The Reverend Andrew Rudman, a Catholic priest from New Orleans, was attending his 11th event. Hopefully, this will be the last March for Life, he said. Rudman said previous marches may have had larger crowds, but he does not recall this level of optimism. Abortion rights groups worry that at least 26 states are in line to further limit abortion access if Roe is weakened or overturned. In December, the court indicated in a major case that it would uphold a Mississippi ban on abortions after 15 weeks of pregnancy and allow states to ban abortion even earlier. The Mississippi case directly challenges Roe. Top US and Russian diplomats made no major breakthrough at talks on Ukraine on Friday, but agreed to keep talking to try to resolve a crisis that has stoked fears of a military conflict. After the talks in Geneva, US Secretary of State Antony Blinken warned of a swift, severe response if Russia invades Ukraine after massing troops near its border. Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov said Moscow was still waiting for a written response to its demands for security guarantees. But both said they were open to further dialogue, and Blinken saw grounds to hope that mutual security concerns could be addressed. Based on the conversations we've had, I think there are grounds for and a means to address some of the mutual concerns that we have about security, Blinken said. He described the talks as frank and substantive and said Russia now faced a choice. It can choose a path of diplomacy that can lead to peace and security or the path that will lead only to conflict, severe consequences and international condemnation, Blinken told reporters, adding that diplomacy would be preferable. We've been clear, if any Russian military forces move across Ukraine's border, that's a renewed invasion. It will be met with swift, severe and a united response from the United States and our partners and allies. Lavrov said the ball was in Washington's court. Describing the meeting as open and useful, he said Moscow would understand whether talks were on the right track once it had received a written response to its sweeping security demands from the United States. A rebellion against British Prime Minister Boris Johnson by some of his Conservative Party's newest members of Parliament quickly collapsed this week, but might just be a foretaste of the trouble ahead. If nothing else, the revolt shows that lawmakers' loyalty to Johnson is heavily conditional on his reputation as a vote winner and that his reputation is in severe jeopardy. 
Next week, a civil service report is expected to be published on a series of gatherings that appear to fly in the face of coronavirus lockdowns and have already battered Johnson's standing among voters and could be the cue for more seasoned and formidable rivals to move against him. But dissent has been growing for months before the rebels met twice early in the week to gauge the appetite for trying to force Johnson out, according to lawmakers, some of whom attended the meetings. They agreed to start the process of forcing a parliamentary no-confidence vote against Johnson, who is under huge personal pressure over revelations about gatherings at his official Downing Street premises, and has urged critics to await the outcome of civil servant Sue Gray's investigation. Johnson has repeatedly said no COVID-19 rules were broken at Downing Street, but did apologise for attending a gathering on the 20th of May 2020, for which staff had been invited by one of his aides to bring their own booze. By Tuesday, some thought they might have collected enough support to pass the 54 written expressions of discontent needed to trigger a vote of no confidence in Johnson in the parliamentary party. But their plot was flawed. Within a day, it became clear that the threshold of 54 letters had not been met. A few hours later, one of their colleagues quit the Conservatives to join the opposition Labour Party. You can subscribe to 5 Minute News on YouTube with your preferred podcast app. Ask your smart speaker or enable 5 Minute News as your Amazon Alexa flash briefing skill. Subscribe, rate and review online at 5minute.news. 5 Minute News is an evergreen podcast covering politics, inequality, health and climate. Delivering independent, unbiased and essential world news daily.